thinking this morning about relationships, specifically our relationship to our God, and how that's a very common refrain in the Christian world. People will say, you got to have a relationship with God. You got to have a relationship with Jesus. And my experience has been, and I've also, I mean, directly, personally, when I was in the church system and the religious realm and also in a lot of the sermons I, I hear on radio and I understand that that television and most media portrays the relationship in the following way that is that if you really are pleasing to God in whatever way that particular person or denomination defines how to be pleasing to God you will get blessings in other words you do the things he likes and you, and you don't do the things he doesn't like and he will look upon you and smile and say my child here you go here's some good stuff and, and the bad stuff I might have done to you I won't do or the bad stuff that the world might have laid on you I'll protect you from it and that's you know it's common so I guess you could say it's legit to that extent it's very common it's very understandable to believe that I always had a problem with it because I knew I didn't deserve anything but I went along with it because I thought well these are the smart people they know who do I know I'm a heathen atheist five minutes ago what do I know but I still saw it because I think our God reaches out to us. He, he shows us who he is. And the thing that you will find if you watch my wife and I's videos is that that's an upside down way of looking at things. And I, and I know that they don't always express it that way. But if you really look at what they're saying, that's basically what they're saying. It's, yeah, I mean, you may not have heard Sugar Daddy in that description, but that's a description of a sugar daddy that he will offer you comforts and blessings and indulge your flesh as long as you are willing to do the things that a sugar daddy would have you do and the other way the way that we found to be true the way that the Bible actually describes is he's already given us everything he has literally already given us everything. He's given us himself. That cross means something. It, it means something in perpetuity. It's a symbol now, but it's a very real reality that he was willing to give himself, his own life. He became one of us and, and paid the price. Suffering died so we could not only see his heart, but have access to his heart to have that heart connected to our hearts so we literally have everything and people say well sounds nice Mark but that's just a license of sin or all these things they'll just go out and abuse it and that's I, I, I'm not denying that that doesn't happen but only from the standpoint of they really they don't really see his heart because if they really saw his heart, then that, that wouldn't be what they want to do. I'm not saying you stop sinning. I'm just saying to bring this thing full circle, what would be more likely to cause a person to sin less? If that was the goal. I don't believe it's the goal. But what would be more the goal? My child, if you only do good things and never do bad things, I will bless you. Well, we know how that works been going on for history everyone's trying to get stuff by behaving themselves and it doesn't work they they may put on a good public picture but they just suppress it and push it down and convince themselves and not much of anyone else that they're doing it and they just become prideful and, and hateful and mean which is what most religious people eventually become if you're not yet you stay in, in a religious mindset you will become a mean person and very judgmental or what if you really knew 
deep down to the core of your heart that this person, God, your creator, literally became like you and gave himself for you, knowing that you could reject him just so you could catch a glimpse of his heart and, and maybe decide that, I want that heart. He did that knowing that many people would spit on it. Many people would not even look at it. And some would look at it and say, well, I still want the things of the world. And convince themselves that, oh, I can, I can sin and still have God. Which technically is true. But you certainly aren't getting the real prize. The real prize being Him. And when you can see that, we can see how amazing that is. We can see how awesome it is to have the love of your God. To literally have that love of Jesus. I mean, <laughs> there's nothing like it. It's amazing. Because trying to get it and thinking you're getting it through your work and your obedience and sacrifice and, and attendance and money there's just no comparison there's it's it's night and day it's night and day the the sugar daddy approach or that my father loves me and I know he loves me and I have everything I don't need to ask him for anything not that I don't I'm just saying the things of substance the eternal things are already mine they're already yours all you, you have to do is say okay I receive that. I accept that. That's good enough for me. You have everything. What is there to ask for? What is there to lose? You can't lose it. So anyway, that's my thought for today. In Jesus' name, amen.